Share your knowledge, share your things. Hello and welcome to my Coach House workshop uh, in Westbury and Wiltshire. We're just over the borders uh, from Somerset and just on the other side of the Somerset border from us is a lovely town called Froome. And in that lovely town called Froome is a wonderful new shop which is called Share, the Library of Things. Now from that shop you may well have borrowed something like this. This is an orbital sander. Uh, orbital sanders are one of many different types of of, uh, of power sander. An orbital sander is a moderate tool in terms of its sanding ability. Um, this type of sander, which is called a belt sander, I have two different varieties here. That is a, uh, a three inch belt sander and this is a four inch or 100 millimeter belt sander. Um, they're a pretty serious mother of a tool to be honest. Um, what they tend to do is to um, take much more material away, but they do it in a much more aggressive way. So they do take a little bit of handling. Um, so we're going to talk about the orbital sander first. The orbital sander basically is a little bit like uh, an electric drill with a pad on the end. It rotates, but it also has a slightly strange eccentric, I believe is the correct phrase, motion, um, which if I plug it in you'll see Whenever you plug anything in, by the way, you can turn it on its side, or in the case of one of these, it's probably better actually to hold on to it. I'll leave that one on its side there. Make sure the trigger is in the off position. Many of them have a, a fixed button position like that, so you can leave it in the on position. Before you plug it in, make sure all power tools are clearly in the off position. But also, don't trust the fact that that's working. Make sure you have it in a way that if you turn it off, it won't jump off the table. That's particularly important with the belt sander. Now, I've got an overhead um, power socket here, so I can plug that in. <coughs> so, orbital sander. It's quite a nice, quiet one, this, actually. Quite a quiet model. Uh, all sanding devices should come with a port and a little attachment whereby you can attach a, a hoover or a vacuum to it. That's a really good idea. It's kind of valuable, obviously, if you bought one yourself, you'll have all the attachments. Do use them, especially with these, because they produce some very fine dust. Orbital sand is quite an easy thing to use. Basically, you just keep palm pressure on it. When it's turned on, I'll just experiment very briefly. I'll turn it on, and you'll see what I mean. Can you still hear me? I wonder. Well... If you can't hear me, I'll put a caption up there. So, this is in the direction of the grain. Left, right, left, right. That's against the grain. Across the grain. The grain runs this way on the piece of wood. Try and keep the cable out of the way of the sander when it's working. Now, the thing about an orbital sander is because of the eccentric motion, it doesn't create lots and lots of sanding marks. Very clean. Very clean indeed. i turn it off for a second. So, what you'll find is there's different grits available. This, this one that's on here, this is a very well worn, um, very well worn indeed. Now, before changing anything, unplug. Let's talk a little bit about grit types. Um, Grit is the technical term uh, referring to the amount of pieces of grit per square inch on the, uh, on the discs or the belts. That's a four inch belt. These are All three of these are four inch belts um, from the belt sander, the big one here. But they have different grits. This one is called a P40. This one is called a P80. And this one is called, I think this is a P120, is it? Uh, it is indeed, it's actually a P100. What that means is, that has 100 parts of grit per, it's either, it's either um, square centimetre or, 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 or square inch, I'm not sure. Um, either way, it's a, it, is a, it is a standard. Um, and um, P80 is roughly equivalent to your normal, everyday, semi-rough 
sandpaper, which if you go, I was just talking about going with the grain, if you went with the grain, it's fine. But if you went against the, the grain, it automatically leaves big scuff marks, which then need lots and lots of cleaning up before you can lacquer that. That's the only real difficulty in sanding. And the main reason why the orbital sander on a flat surface wins every time. It's a much more delicate beast than these. But some P80. So, let's put a P80 grit on here. Just beds nicely, like that. Again, make sure it's in the off position. Plug it in. Right. Fill it back in again. So it'll fly off into my face. Now, Seriously, from a DIY perspective, these are probably the most handleable kind of um, uh, sanders to get. And if you're buying one and you were doing a lot of sanding, well, you're not going to sand down lots and lots and lots of doors with this, but you do get a really nice finish on. So if you're just taking off a bit of old varnish or something, and you're left with a fairly rough surface, having used some nitromorse or something like that, um, after a really good clean up um, to wash the nitromorse away, Using something like this, of course, with all the necessary safety equipment, which would involve, just as a matter of interest, using any of these sanders, really, you should wear, well, ear defenders definitely with those ones, they're a little quieter, so they're okay. A good quality dust mask, and um, gloves are also quite a good idea, again, especially with those, because um, that's moving at quite a, quite a pace, and uh, can, can uh, give you a nasty graze if you're not careful. That's about it for those. They're really straightforward, guys. Really straightforward. Um, I should take that off. Uh, again, you've got different grits available. 80 is the standard. Uh, 40 if you're doing really rough work. Um, 120 is a very nice, smooth finishing one. All relevant, all useful. Just depends what you're doing. Think about it in terms of if you're approaching it by hand and think, should I use this rough paper or... Is it just like taking the surface off? I want to use something like this lovely grey aluminium oxide paper. That's a P180. It's really good finishing paper. Excellent. It lasts very long. It lasts very well as well. Um, look at always in the direction of the grain. Ever, always with those. And with these, which is a belt sander. Um, when you're using a belt sander, there's several things you should be aware of. Number one, just like I said with the other sanders, you've got to make sure that it's off. Again, I've got, I, I can fix this on by pulling the trigger in and locking it. That's in a fixed on position. It also has two speeds, this one, which you set um, before you turn it on, uh, high and low. Um, if you plug this in and this is in the on position, what happens, oh, I don't even know what I should demonstrate, go on then, I will, I shall put myself against here so it doesn't go fly and I shall just hang on to this handle and you see what happens when I plug this in look. I'm not touching the on off by the way, I'm just holding this behind. It's noisy too. Are you ready? This is why you shouldn't do this by the way, okay? Also got a mouthful of dust then, but that's why. So, when you're dealing with a belt sander, whenever you're doing anything with a belt sander, put it on its side, either this side or that side. It's fine. Then if it is accidentally plugged, when it plugs in, it's not going to go and take off the table. And believe me, that weighs about. Oh, I don't know, two, two and a half kilograms, that goes flying off the table. I've actually seen it happen um, many years ago. And um, very sadly, it was, uh, it was uh, borrowed by one friend of mine um, from another friend of mine. And uh, we, all three of us, saw it fly off the table when he plugged it in and bounce off a concrete floor, uh, never to recover. So, um, uh, the sander, not the man that was. Um, these things are very aggressive. Um, if you're doing any work on it, you unplug it. Always. They're brilliant tools, don't get me wrong, but you have to be confident to use these. They have two basic adjustments. This is what loosens a lever, loosens the belt. It's exactly the same on this device. 
it's that lever. So they're all more or less the same. It's a side lever and it just brings these barrels in slightly to enable you to release the belt. Um, usually the first thing you know about a belt is when it breaks um, and then you think, oh, how do I put it back on? Well, that's how. You need to make sure, if it comes to you like this, that you need to release that lever into the compressed side. Then you need to pay attention to the arrows, the arrows on the paper. Uh, this is a P100, I'm putting it back on here, it's quite an old one, it's quite smooth. Uh, there's the arrow, there on the side, here, arrow of rotation, which means it rotates like this. Very important, you find the arrow, make sure it lines up along the top, and you slot it on that way. Slot it on down, roughly into the middle, unplugged, always unplugged. Clip it back. Then, on its side, and making sure it's off, you can plug it in. Now, the other thing you have to be very aware of um, with belt sanders is that they have a, uh, an adjuster, which is actually in this one. The adjuster is here. On this particular smaller model, the, the adjuster is here. It's literally just a screw in, screw out adjuster. And what that adjuster does, it's very delicate, it's very easy to believe when you actually got it on and you see the belt fly either in this direction or in that direction which if I just start this up you see what might happen. By little adjustments it will ride up or down. Indeed it will fly off completely if you're not careful. Um, and you just have to play with that for a minute until you get that right before you can use it, especially when you've changed a belt. If you've been lucky enough to get your sander with the right grit on and you're not doing much sanding, you didn't need to change your belt, well then you've been lucky. But more, more commonly than not you will actually have to change the belts. That's a P100, that's a P80, that's a P40, we discussed that earlier. If you're using these guys, I mean that grips like, it grips really, really, really well onto anything. What that means is that will literally shred timber like this, but there's a very good reason why you might want to do that. So, I plug back in here. Um, I'm going to unplug that again, look, and the reason I'm going to do that is that I'm going to demonstrate the P40. P40 being about the most uh, gritty grit that you'd want to use, to use a uh, black hatter type uh, simile. The grittiest grit that ever there was. Arrow in the right direction. Slot that on. Lock it down. Now you can plug it in, make sure it's off. Plug it in. Now I'm going to test this button and you see what this belt does. Um, how can I demonstrate this best? I'll hold it a bit like an angle, like, uh, actually no, I'm going to put it this way around. There's a good reason why you wouldn't want to do this if this was your piece of work, because this belt will slide towards that edge and then it will carve big marks onto your work. But because I don't care about this, I'm going to do that just for the purpose of demonstration. So you'll see what goes on when I adjust this little thing. Now we have to, we have to get this right. So, plugged in, turned on, let's have a look. Well. Now, that's quite a rare occurrence. I didn't actually have to adjust that. It sat right nicely in the middle. Now, if I uh, hold this towards you like that, I'll just demonstrate what I mean about these. Usually speaking, you'll, you'll put one of these on it and it'll shoot off in one direction or the other. And you have to be just very delicate with these. So let me just experiment here for a second. done is the the uh, the front wheel 
There's a tiny bit of the belt hanging over this side and a tiny bit hanging over this side, so it's perfect. Perfect setting. Once you've done that, you're ready to go. Remember that this is turned on, so if you're going to move this ever, you don't want to accidentally pull that trigger because it's going to cause some issues. So, how do we use a belt sounder? Very quickly, um, depending on your piece of work, a belt sander is basically the belt is going like this. It's like a, it's like it's wanting to drive away from you at great speed, which indeed is what it would do if you didn't hang on to it. That also means that it's pushing the piece of work back towards you. Now, if you were using a belt sander like that with a heavy 40 grit on, you'd probably have a piece of work with the grain in this direction which really undulates. Maybe it's really old and you want to get this nice and flat. And the only way you're going to get that flat is to start with a big beast of a machine like this and go across the grain, which is going to give you lots and lots of these nasty scratches, but it's going to get it flat across the grain. I'll show you how to do that. And then when you've done that process, you put a lighter grit on that and then you go with the grain and you keep it moving, otherwise it will carve a nice big hole for you. But as I said, it's got a tendency to run away from you. Yeah, very dusty business. It's got a tendency to want to run away, and we don't want it to run away. We want it to stay exactly where it is. That is not a very long selfie stick. This is just a stick that I can put across my bench and clamp to the bench. And it's very important that I do this because when you're um, when you're standing, you can't always clamp the work because, of course, you have to sand the work. So you can't clamp it. Um, there might be occasions where you can clamp one side, do this, and then clamp the other side and do that. But basically, in order to for this work not to run away, all we need to do is to have something to prevent it from moving backwards like this. Now notice that I'm not wearing any of the safety equipment, that's because I'm doing this for very short periods of time uh, today, just for demonstration purposes, but normally I would have, especially with this beast on, I'd have all three, I'd have gloves, I'd have um, the mask, and I would also have the, uh, uh, the mask, the gloves, and the, and the ear defenders. Um, what? Yeah, that's why you wear ear defenders, because when you start to get to my age, and you haven't been for years, you do tend to suffer a bit. So, we know that this is ready to go. It's plugged in, it's actually turned on. All I have to know is turn it on, and I'd have a hoover plugged into here. This is across the grain. And, you will see, this is completely loose, this piece of work, but because it can go back no further than my little uh, ridge that I've set up, it means I can very confidently, I can put that round my neck to get rid of it so it's not in the way, or round my back. I can hold on to the piece of work, nothing around it, make sure everything is away from around it, and then you can work really confidently across the grain in easy sweeping movements like this. I'm going to turn that off, for obvious reasons. Very dusty, but you can see how effective that is. I mean, it's just an amazing beast. Thanks for that. Um, it's a workshop, that's what you're supposed to have a bit of dust, aren't you? So, respect. Respect for your tool, respect in the workplace, respect for the, um, for the tops, and everything will be absolutely fine. Now, no matter which tool you've used today, um, do remember that if you don't know something, ask... And if you do have the knowledge, please share the knowledge. Thank you very much. Share your knowledge, share your...